Hi guys, this is Beef Miniatures Warhammer Tactics Series and today I have something special for you. We'll be taking a look at 5 bad things in the current Space Marine Codex and what they lack to be usable. And the first thing on our list is the Master of the Codex Warlord trait. You're gonna have only 5 chances to gain a CP throughout the game because you, you are gaining 1 in each of your command phases on a roll of 4 plus if your Warlord is on the battlefield. So theoretically you'll be gaining 2 or 3 CPs each game using this trait. And that is the main problem of this trait in my opinion, that you are only getting those 5 chances to gain a CP. So if something's wrong with your luck and the dice are not on your side, then you won't have enough time, enough tries to let the luck come back to you, so to speak. And compared to a typical 5 plus uh, command point regain, like for example the Ultramarines Adept of the Codex stratagem, where your attempts are only limited by the amount of command points you have, and in a typical Strike Force game, we have 12 command points at the start of the game and five more are gained throughout the game. So 17 in total. Of course you're gonna spend some before the game and some will be spent unequally throughout the battle rounds so you will be missing out sometimes on your ability to regain the command point because you have already regained one before. So I'm sure you can see the pattern here already. You will have more attempts with a typical 5 plus regain command point trait to get the statistically correct amount of command points from this trait. Of course a roll of 4 plus is better than a roll of 5 plus but you'll have only 5 chances for the master of the codex trait and in a typical game if you have at least 8 rolls for a 5 plus regain you'll be gaining 3 command points from this trait and if you'll be able to roll 11 times throughout the game which is quite possible if you didn't spend a lot for your pre-game stratagems You'll be able to return 4 CPs, which is far better than the Master of the Codex World trade can. Another problem with this trade is that it's only available on the Chapter Master with a 40 points Chapter Master upgrade. And let's be honest, Chapter Masters are not what they used to be at all. You need a very solid list and a very thorough game plan to return this investment. And the final nail in this trade's coffin is that it happens in your command phase, which means that you won't be able to use it if your character is not on the battlefield in the transport or in deep strike. Unlike the Adept of the Codex, for example, which happens whenever you use the stratagem and if your warlord is on the battlefield, you can regain command points with it. If at the start of your movement phase your warlord was in the transport, then but then disembarked and now is on the battlefield throughout your turn and your opponent's turn, you be able to refund the command points just fine. Probably the only good thing I can say about the Master of the Codex trait is that it's available to basically all the chapters except the Grey Knights and the Death Watch, which is great because not every chapter has means to refund the command points. Our next glorious contender are the Suppressors, because they seem to be one of the most forsaken units in the whole Codex. The Shadow Spear box came out, I was very hopeful about those guys. I hoped that they would fit this role of a fast counter-attack firepower unit with the Space Marines. Unfortunately, they turned out to be so ridiculously underpowered that they are mostly unusable. First of all, they are too pricey. They cost 100 points per squad, which is 33 points per model. And they have nothing, nothing to back that up. Their firepower is close to laughable for this price. They can only deal 2.3 wounds to a Rhino. They are one of few units left in the whole Space Marine Codex that still suffer from the minus one to hit penalty for moving and shooting the heavy weapons. Which makes their 12 inch move obsolete because you either need to stand still to shoot better or move and shoot at 4 plus ballistic skill which is strange. They somehow have a core keyword, but they will probably never benefit from it because they are the unit that needs to be deep striking to justify their price somehow. And even for a deep strike nuisance unit, they are not that great because they are only a primaris model. Three primaris guys with three up save and toughness four are not gonna last very long. It's one of the things that I've covered in my video how to build a strong space marine list. The units that you send uh, to your opponent's deployment zone to wreak havoc, uh, not, not particularly to kill something, but to be a distraction. They need to be able to withstand at least some firepower before they die, or you're just giving your opponents easy targets. At least they have the smokescreen keyword, I'm not sure how well it will help them though. 
because, and here's the last thing I don't like about them, they only come in units of three guys per squad. So stratagems like the aforementioned smokescreen are, be, are gonna be wasted on them and are not going to be protecting your tanks or dreadnoughts. One good thing I can say about them is that like many uh, Games Workshop models nowadays, they look very nice and their backpacks and other cannons can be used as nice bits for your conversions. So while we're here waiting for the suppressors to become better, let's move to the third candidate. And these are the Reavers. These guys are notoriously bad. They are a Warhammer equivalent of a Koala in the boxing ring. They have minimal melee output. All that their sword-sized combat knives can give them is a single additional attack. They don't get any AP, any damage boost, none of this nonsense. Only a single attack is just fine for them. But if you aren't satisfied with those glorious knives, you can, if you so choose, exchange them for the awesome bolt carabines, which are an equivalent of a bolt gun but with an assault 2 type instead of rapid fire 1. Again, no additional AP, damage, range, cool guys don't need all that. Probably the only special thing about them are their special issue, no pun intended, bolt pistols, which have AP-2, which is nice. Games Workshop tried to make these guys usable by adding two stratagem unlocking keywords to them. First one unlocks a terror troop stratagem, a 2CP stratagem that allows you to turn off a OPSEC for the models around them and to stop actions if you'll be able to roll a higher than the target's leadership on two dice. That stratagem would be okay by itself if it wasn't locked to the reverse, especially for two command points. A unit like Reavers needs all the help they can get, so I hope that they'll change the price of the stratagem to 1 CP in the near future. And the Shock and Awe stratagem allows you to impose a minus 1 to hit penalty to a target within 6 inches of the Reavers. It turns off the selected unit's Overwatch, which is not that helpful in the 9th edition, I think. Reavers also have a minus 2 leadership debuff aura, like the Necron Flayed Ones. But the problem with Reavers, compared to Flayed Ones, for example, is that they won't be able to kill enough models for this minus 2 leadership debuff to come into play. Reavers are so bad that, for example, in Death Watch, where you can use Reavers as a part of a Spectre skill team, a kill team that consists of Phobos units only, you will actually lose the Concealed Positions rule because you have included the Reavers into your kill team. So enough with the Reavers, I think that we all see that they are pretty much unusable now. Let's move to the fourth candidate. Space Marine Flyers, a flying potatoes with the aerodynamics of a brick. I've always had a soft spot in my heart for those things, even though they weren't good at all throughout the 8th edition and now in 9th edition they are even worse. They don't score, they can't move block and they can't do actions. But the worst thing about them is that they are far too easy to kill. Unlike the Drukari Flyers that have minus one to hit and they have a 5 plus invulnerable save, Space Marine Flyers don't have one. So you're paying a lot of points for a poorly protected tank that gives you almost no tactical advantage. Storm Raven has the biggest problem with it because it costs the most. 350 points in maximum configuration and I don't know why but it wasn't even discounted like the Land Raiders and the Repulsors in the last Munitorium Field Manual. It's almost impossible to hide them because they don't receive the benefit from the obscuring terrain. So to make sure that your opponent won't shoot them down in your first turn, you need a big line of sight blocking piece of terrain right in your deployment zone. Which is not impossible to find nowadays in 9th edition, but definitely isn't a guaranteed thing. And this means that the Storm Raven's transport capabilities are not that great of a benefit, because instead of targeting the 350 points flyer, your opponent will be also shooting into the unit that is inside of it. And with no ability to reroll the dice when you disembark your units from a destroyed transport, you have a very high risk of easily losing practically a quarter of your army. So yeah, with practically no access to rerolls aside from the doctrine of Iron Hands and a couple of chapter tactics, flyers nowadays are not a great thing to add to your lists, unfortunately. And the last unit on our list today is the Hammerfall Bunker. First thing I need to say about it is that it looks epic. It's one of those units that is very nice for a friendly game with your buddies. But from a competitive standpoint, of course, it's... Uh, 
very mediocre. Its firepower isn't great, it has a 4 plus degrading ballistic skill, uh, unless you're playing the, it as Iron Hands, which I will probably uh, I would probably recommend. You'll also be able to benefit from the Iron Hands super doctrine of reroll once to hit for vehicles in the first turn in the Devastator doctrine. And I think that uh, it should have been a non-degrading ballistic skill like the Canoptic Doomstalkers. Uh, this bunker doesn't look like it can take damage very easily. It has toughness 8, but it's pretty easy to kill anyways with its 3 plus save. I don't understand why it doesn't have a 2 plus save, it's really strange. It can shoot 200 killer missiles per turn and a bunch of heavy bolt or shots that are going to be using the defensive array ability, which is pretty cool in theory, but in practice you'll probably be shooting at one or two targets and the others will be covered by the line of sight blocking terrain. For those who don't know, the defensive array ability allows you to shoot at all the targets that are in the line of sight of this bunker with its heavy bolters or the heavy flamers. Bunker is not cheap. At 175 points, I'm not sure that it's worth its price, given that it's completely immovable. And another thing bad about that is that any unit that tags your bunker in close combat will be able to avoid most of your army shooting. Of course, the bunker itself will eventually kill the unit that tagged it, but it may take a couple of turns. So, all in all, probably not the worst unit, but pretty close to that, so if you really like it, you should definitely buy it and use it in your army, but for a competitive game, I'm sure that it's not something that you'll want to add to your list. So that's it guys, these are the 5 units that I think need some fixing in the current Space Marine Codex. Uh, please don't be sorry if you use them and they don't perform, and I'll see you next time!